All right, hey, what is going on, guys? It's Dean, and we're back again with another video today. It's actually going to be another tutorial. Um, well, I wouldn't really call it tutorials; probably mainly tips and tricks, kind of like the last video. Um, quickly before we get into this video, thanks to anyone who supported the last video. Um, since I posted it around two days ago, I've gained like eleven or twelve subscribers. It's like the second most viewed my channel uh, video on my channel, and it's uh, the most liked video as well already. So. Thanks to anyone who has supported that video and thanks to anyone uh, who has now subscribed to that video. I hope you enjoy the content to come. I'm hoping to keep bringing content and not letting the channel go stale. So, um, yeah, this video is going to be today how another how to write sort of tips and tricks, but this time uh, more focusing on horror music or suspense slash tension music, mainly horror um, for film or games. There's got to be no video with this one, the way we had the incredible scene in the last video. This just got to be on my own tracks um, and we're just going to briefly break it down to some of the tips that I'd give for writing a track like this. So uh, we'll just listen to the track quickly, uh, it's only around a minute and a half long and then after that, I'll just give you some brief tips and tricks and how to approach a track like this. So I hope you enjoy. So yeah, that's the track. Um, again, like the last track for the Incredibles, it's only seven, uh, seven tracks used in this. So again, not a lot of musical material. It just shows you can create a really effective piece with not a lot of music. Um, it seems to be a trend in these videos that I actually haven't used a lot of tracks for some reason. Um, there's a few probably things behind that why I actually haven't used a lot of tracks. One. I'm not on a very powerful system still. I'm only on my MacBook Pro or an iMac sometimes, and both of them only have 8 gigs of RAM. So um, I can't store loads and loads of instruments, especially at the time I was writing this track. I was actually using East West, um, which all these samples are from East West, other than the deep bass and the glockenspiel are actually built into Logic Pro. So East West is a very uh, power hungry sample library, and it takes up a lot of RAM. I actually find East West quality quite decent. Sometimes you need to tamper with it a little bit to get the best sound out of it. But I know a lot of people slag off East West and talk really bad about it. But it has some really good libraries. Some of them are a tiny bit dated, but some of their ethnic libraries like Silk and Raw and uh, Gypsy, different libraries that they've they've really stood the test of time. Some are still great for some of the samples that they offer. Um, in this, I won't open these up like I did in the last video just because uh, the play engine can be very slow sometimes. The piano is from a library called East West Goliath. Uh, the violins, uh, cellos are both from East West uh, Hollywood Strings Gold, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and the soft percussion is from Storm Drum Tree. Storm Drum Tree is another library that's amazing as well. I'd still use that in some of the tracks that are right now. It's a great uh, library still. So getting into this actual piece, I'm just going to give little tips on how to maybe uh, write this type of horror style. As this was the first horror piece I actually ever wrote and it went down really well on my channel. I got loads of great feedback on this track, so I thought I'd actually use it for this video. Um, again, sorry if I'm like running ahead of myself. I'm just trying not to make these videos too long. So if, if there's anything that you might have missed or if you'd like me to break these videos down to two parts in the future so I can talk a bit slower, just let me know in the comments. But yeah, so let's get into this. 
as you can see, there's not many there's not many things going on. Uh, it's very short, and the music material you can see by the MIDI files doesn't there's not that much. Like it's really straightforward and quite simple to do. You just have to think simplistically and break it down, nice and easy. So the main thing that starts off this piece, obviously, as you can see down the bottom here, is sort of percussion and the deep bass. These are as well the deep bass, the sort of F and the FX sounds are really essential when it comes to writing horror music because they give that bottom bassy undertone, that sort of the unsettling uh, beginning to these type of tracks. They they're not a necessity to put in the horror music, but they they really help. Uh, a Glockenspiel you wouldn't always see. In a horror in a horror track, uh, it does work for me really well. And in fairness, without the Glockenspiel here, uh, you actually, it, it's not. It is still creepy, but it's not as creepy as you can hear. Like the FX and the bass, it gives that undertone that really sort of unsettles the piece. But the percussion gets a bit boring without the Glockenspiel. And once you add the Glockenspiel in. Your your brain is just suddenly thinking, oh, okay, what what what's happening here? Especially with the different dynamic changes there in the Glockenspiel from the attacks. Uh, so it's it's nice to try different instruments that sometimes might not always fit into the actual genre of music that you're writing, like a Glockenspiel. There may be loads of horror scores out there that actually have a Glockenspiel in it, but I I haven't really came across any. So that can be tip number one: experiment with instruments. Sometimes a certain timbres of certain instruments might fit really well into a, into a uh, scene there, right? Um, what next would I say? Look for inspiration in other tracks. So one of the main inspirations that I took for this track was this soft percussion. Um, one of my favourite horror tracks would be the piece from Jason, uh, where it's like the vocal sounds like, hee hee, ma ma ma. Like that sort of weird sound, it's really unsettling when listening to Jason. Um, I I didn't want to sing that, and I couldn't get any vocals to do it, so I kind of tried to get a percussion to actually make that sound. And that's what the percussion at the start sort of uh, resembled for me, was that vocal sound from the Jason track. You can kind of picture the voices doing the exact same thing. Uh and that, all that is is a simple shaker. It's just one shaker. It just gives you that tone of that voice, and uh, it resembles sort of the voices that inspired me for this uh, for that part of the track. So there were two tips there: look for an instrument that you don't really see in the genre, and also look for inspirations, as basically as reference tracks. Loads of people knows that know that they should use reference tracks in anyways, but have a look for a reference track and try to maybe take something out and use it in your own little way to affect your track. So moving on to the melody. Melody isn't always essential in horror music. And to be honest, I you can call this piano part a melody, I suppose. But I didn't really see it as melody. I just saw it as one creepy line that I wanted to use as much as I could and get as much space out of as I could. The kind of the way I did with the guitar, uh, the guitar melody in Incredibles. As I said there, it's really useful to find a melody that works for you. And get as much mileage out of that melody as you possibly can. Um, if I kept repeating this one melody from the start, it would have got very boring and would have got really predictable. But I didn't. You can see as the track progresses that the melody slightly changes. It either loses notes, it gets notes added on, or the end, the resolution of the ending is changed. So that's that is the open melody, but it changes as the piece goes on. We hear a force. We hear a force at this bar six here, and then when we move on, the resolution is then different. That's sorry. That's actually the force one right there. So the bottom note is an F resolving up to a G. The answering phrase to that is then the exact same as an F, but it's resolving a semitone up on this time to an F sharp. Semitones are really good in horror music to create tension, and um, because. It, S sort of semitone movement ears don't like sort of hearing semitones sometimes and it creates a lot of tension when listening to a piece so I'd really sort of jot that down as a note maybe keep in mind that if you want to write sort of a creepy melodic line sometimes little semitones in between notes can be really uh, really useful to use so as you can see as this progresses on it then goes from four notes down to three so that already is an alteration because your ear is expecting the four notes 
but here only it's three. So you're offsetting the listener. You're like, oh, okay, what what's happening here? Um, as you move forward up, it's still three again, but then this time you go back to four, and the fourth note is a note that you haven't heard before either. So that again is letting the listener sort of these changes make the listener sort of preconceive different things that are going to happen within the track because they know it's a horror track but it's by the vibe they already give him so if this was used in a scene which it isn't in a scene but it could very e- i think this track person could very easily fit into a game if you're walking around or fit into a horror scene it could very easily fit in there to create tension and if this was used in a scene these slight alterations will make a listener's ear think oh wh- why has that changed what's going to happen next that's what i mean by the, the same idea of the melody is still here, the same, the two notes don't really change from the start, it's what comes after it kind of changes, either it gets cut down to three notes instead of four, or the fourth note is different from the last time we've heard it. There's just slight things of that, that isn't really big, but in the long run it goes a really far away when you're creating uh, different changes towards the listener when they're actually hearing the track. Here again it goes, you're going from four back to three and it resolves differently again from the last time you heard only a three note melody then three again but again once it's changed all these things you know yourself because it's staying with the same melodic sort of fragment that you heard at the very start of the piece but thus these alterations are helping carry the piece forward and keeping a bit of change within it so when writing melodies for horror music um keep keep it small don't don't write big lush string stuff and go crazy just keep the melodic fragments very small and just just change them slightly as you can see here like you can as i scroll through you saw how much they didn't really change loads and the same melodic idea is the same but just the slight alterations help keep the piece flowing and keeps the listener interested and not get bored and keeps them constantly thinking oh what's going to happen next what's going to happen next so Moving on to the second thing that I would give um, a tip for. Well, it's actually probably the fourth tip because I gave two at the start. So maybe tip four. I'm going to lose track of myself. You can keep track for me. Um, That really helped me when writing this piece was using effects. So what I mean by that is like reverbs, delays, distortion, different things like that. Um, it, that these type of things are really effective when writing horror music. The two things that I used the most when in this track was delay and distortion. I'll show you the examples of this and how effective they actually, like how effective they are within this piece. So I'm sure after, at this point you already know what this piano sounds like. This is what it sounds like without stereo delay. Now with everything else going on around it still kind of sounds all right if kind of fits but once the stereo delay is on it the the difference that one little effect makes is it's absolutely outstanding i think personally especially when you have earphones on because the stereo delay as i have a program is bounced left to right the notes the echoes of the notes are constantly bouncing left to right so it's making a listener feel very uneasy um small little things like that have a massive effect on a piece where like you just heard it there without stereo delay it, it it works but you're kind of thinking oh like this is this is kind of boring and then once the delay is on you're like oh okay it's just those little decrescendo uh echoes that you hear in each note have a really strong effect there's also a delay effect on the percussion i'm pretty sure yeah the percussion has delay and the glockenspiel has delay as well so you can see especially the percussion is another one especially in this piece if i solo it out there to start if i took the delay off it oh I took the wrong one off i was thinking the same spot if i took the delay off that like that that's all that is that that's not really effective at all it's just a random shake now the a uh, reverb that I have on it, which is a great reverb. If anyone uses Logic, use Space Designer reverb. It is an amazing built-in reverb, but it's not as nowhere near as effective as that bouncing stereo delay effect. And 
different these add great color to a track they really do so definitely look into if if you're new like i'm new to using effects i'm i'm not i'm much more classically trained when it comes to composition so mixing and mastering and using DAW effects and things is very new to me so this was a track where i experimented with different things like stereo delay to see what effects i can get on it as you can hear it, it turned out great for me the second effect i would say which really added a great color is distortion um, I was originally going to use a guitar on this piece. Don't know why. Uh, after listening to it now, I don't think a guitar maybe would have fit really. But I ended up using this, uh, distortion on the cello because distortion is commonly used on guitar. So I was like, okay, I have this cello here. I'll use it on the cello and see how it turns out. So you'll hear the cello now. The cello would probably fit uh, quite well even without um, the distortion, as you can hear here. The intervals that I'm using in the cello, which kind of follow the actual melodic line of the piano, they're they're um, not not classy. I wouldn't say they just they're creepy. They're sort of creepy intervals where it's moving down, so they have a sort of ominous, creepy effect. But once the distortion's added on it, it adds such a nice color to the cello. It does. And you, the reverb is much more prominent as well from the distortion. And the difference it makes, especially when everything is put together, it, again, it's just outstanding. So, different. Like, I, I don't think I ever really used distortion in a track before this one. Uh, like, I obviously I know what distortion is used for. I know it's commonly used in guitars and you hear it every day in music. But in my own compositions, I don't think I actually really ever used it. So experiment with new things like this it can really help benefit your tracks um what would be the last thing i'd say the last tip i'd say is layering sounds i say i say this when coming to the violins um i'll solo at the violins here the violins don't have anything on them. they only have uh reverb they have no distortion or anything like that so when i'm saying layering i mean just layering in notes to build up a chord as and it's it's a really common thing in horror music. It'd be kind of a cliche thing in any ways. You hear in really old horror music as the tension builds, the layering and the, the string section builds and builds and builds. And that's the idea that I got from here for this section. Now you can hear that. That's ten, that tension is straight away there because that's a semitone uh, between each other, like I was saying earlier on. And then it's the top note, and then it fades away. So that sort of layering, layering uh, different notes on top of each other when using string instruments is a really effective way to build tension and build suspense in a piece. Not just even in horror music, you can use that in action. If a lot of people use that in action music. Um, but in, this, in a piece like this, where you're just trying to make someone feel uneasy and sort of scare them, layering intervals that clash really well together, like the semitones, that are here uh, further up that C to C sharp is really well and that C from C that C to C sharp is also taken from the piano it is um, the bass notes that you hear constantly throughout the piano is a C to a C sharp so the, the melodic section of this piece all the, the melodies are all strung into each other it, when you listen to it you, you might not pick up on it but when you look at all the MIDI files, it's it's very simple to do. All you have to do, like once you take a musical section from one instrument, bring it into another, this it's got to sound completely different. So that's just another thing within itself. Don't don't overcomplicate things and feel like you have to write a whole new section just because you're using a different instrument. Take what you have in one instrument, bring it into another, and see how it sounds there in different registers and octaves. And just the actual tone of the instrument itself, a violin sounds completely different to the bass of a piano. So just bring them into a different instrument that you're using, see how they sound, see if they work, and then build on from there. It's one good tip for writing quickly as well, so you don't have to constantly feel like you're writing new material. Take some of the old materials there and then just build from that, so it saves you some time. And you're also uh, creating continuity within your piece, because you're you're keeping... Um, melodic fragments that you've already used in the past of the piece so um, 
yeah, I think we'll probably leave it here. Just nice and short. I just wanted to make a, another one of these because the last one went down so well. Um, if people are still enjoying this, let me know. Because I actually, I, I think I got four or five dislikes on the last video. So whoever, if, if anyone that disliked it is watching this, comment down why you disliked it. I want to know so I can improve these videos or change something so then you actually have a reason to like them. Obviously, I'm trying, as a composer, we're all just trying to learn from each other. Someone is making these videos to maybe just help some composer might be new to writing the style of music or that just wants to experiment or in the style of music and give them some tips on how to maybe begin. Um, as I said in the last video, I'm no genius when it comes to composing and these videos, I do them all in one take. So this is my first time trying this video. So if things are a bit rushed and mumbly, well, it's just because I just go with it and whatever comes out, comes out. So, um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, leave a like, um, comment on it like you said in the last one. Maybe comment on a new genre you'd like me to do next, or just another style of video you'd like to maybe see next. And um, if anyone has composed any other horror tracks, please link them in the comments. I'd like to see them, because um, it'll give me ideas for maybe the next time I compose a horror track as well. So, um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one. Share it around and subscribe and like the video.